Hey, what up guys? It's Kate up here. So a couple of days ago, I made a comment on another YouTube channel and basically the guy is selling courses for Webflow and he teaches people how to use Webflow to create uh, default websites. So I made a comment saying that, you know, why do you even have to learn Webflow when you can just learn HTML and CSS and it's like learning how to drive a manual car and once when you know how to drive a manual, you can also drive in automatic, if that makes sense. And then yesterday I got another email from one of the people that watch my channel and he is a UI and UX designer and he basically just asked me that if he should get into WordPress or Webflow. So you can see that, you know, like this kind of thing is just very popular right now among the designers community. If you're a web designer, you would definitely think about if I should learn, you know, front end development as well. So in this video, I'm going to compare the both. Uh, the differences between WordPress or Webflow, then which ones you use if you are a web de designer. So before I start the comparison, just want to say that, you know, if you're a web designer, you don't have to learn web developments. They're both very different things. So you can be a very successful web designer without knowing web developments. And I will say that, you know, big companies like Google, Facebook, Apple, they're not going to ask you to do both. And they have two different teams to do two different things. So you don't have to do both. And before, if you're a designer, before you get into that I want to make sure that your design game is top notch. And by top notch, I'm saying that, you know, if you get email from Facebook, Google, Apple, they're asking you to work for them, then you are top notch. And before you get to that level, don't even think about learning front end developments because, you know, your time should be spent on improving your design skills. And I promise you that once when you get there, your, your revenue, like people are willing to pay you a lot more money than what you're trying to do right now with mediocre design skill and then trying to also get the money from doing the development part. Because myself, like I do a lot of, I know HTML and CSS and I do code on some websites as well, but there are a lot of things that I don't do. I don't do, you know, PHP, I don't do WordPress, um, I don't do JavaScript, I don't do, you know, React and all of these kind of things, I contract it out to other people and I usually take about 80% cut when I contract out a portion of my work. My work. So, I mean, you're not going to lose much by not knowing something. You can always contract out and you can always always keep some money when you contract things out. So you're not going to lose much. But the most important thing is you want to have the design side of things to be super, super sharp before you get into your developments. So now let's talk about you know, the differences between the both uh, comparing WordPress and Webflow. So when you're thinking about this too, um, I think HTML and CSS is definitely the fundamentals of all of these, you know, front end side of languages, right? Like when you're thinking about that, it doesn't matter which one you go with, you have to learn some fundamentals first. So for Webflow, uh, for WordPress first, what is the good thing? What is the pros of using WordPress? So WordPress is definitely a very big system uh, that you can, you know, handle all of your coding side because you literally have to code out the entire environment. You have to code it from, you know, just basically the, the markups, you know, HTML, CSS, and then you have to put PHP on top of that to convert the site to be WordPress ready. So because of that, you can manage all of your coding and make sure that everything is very clean. And that is essentially, like, especially very important if you're working on a large project, right? Like that, the, the ability to be able to control, control your code, it is super important when you're working on a very large project. So WordPress is great for that and also WordPress is very very good for blocking because the entire CMS the entire thing is created based on blockers right so blocking system is definitely superb if you're using WordPress and also like the CMS side of things and if you don't know what CMS is CMS is the content management system meaning that people can go to WordPress and they can you know edit all the contents and without touching the code so that is great for your clients if he want to change you know some part of content on the website they can just go on uh, kind of uh, WordPress and go to the back end and edit all of those contents. And it's super great for that. And I develop a lot of website with, you know, the, 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 the plugin for, you know, editing the content. So that part is great. And like I mentioned, I mean, it's for all sizes of websites, right? It doesn't matter if your website has two pages or your website has a hundred pages because you can manage the code and WordPress is going to be great for managing large websites. And you can use the same templates and create a, a bunch of other pages so what like you know WordPress is just super great for large websites smaller websites 
all kind of things and it has a big library as well of plugins so for example if you want to include a form for uh, your contact form you can use a plugin on webflow uh, oh, sorry on wordpress to manage that if you want to do any, any kind of fancy thing you will be able to find a plugin and install it to your website and use it so it's super good for the library of plugins and the most importantly webflow is uh like sorry wordpress is free to use so you don't have to pay a buck for using uh, uh, WordPress. If you use, you know, their just their CMS system, you can just download the entire thing and install it on your in environment. You don't have to pay a buck for using web, uh, WordPress. So, what are the cons of using WordPress? So, WordPress is definitely a bit more difficult to use because, you know, other than just knowing HTML and CSS, you also need to know. PHP, which is the server side of language, and I don't know it myself. I also contract that part out, and also like. Word, uh, WordPress tend to take a little bit longer because you know because you have to code both you have to do HTML and then you have to convert your website to PHP so usually it takes longer to develop a website but keep in mind that when you build something great then you know ongoing is going to be a lot easier um, one last cons or uh, there are a lot more cons but one of the cons that I can think about is also WordPress, you may be attacked by viruses because when you download this kind of plugin, you don't know what kind of code you're injecting to your system. And also there's a lot of hackers trying to hack WordPress websites. But I mean, there's some other way that you can get around this, but just keep in mind that sometimes your website may be under attack and things like that can happen to your WordPress website. Now let's talk about Webflow. Webflow is definitely very, very easy to get started. You know, once when you know the basic of HTML and CSS, then you can just use Webflow as your interface to create all of those components that you would normally need to code out. So for example, you, if you want to create a container, you can just drag the container to your Webflow canvas and that is a container. So you don't even have to do the coding for that. And so that is super easy to get started once when you know the basic and you don't know, you don't need to know any of the JavaScript because you know, when you want to you create a slider, some kind of parallel effects, they have all that on Webflow. You just have to drag it over and that is done. So it's super great and that can potentially make your website to be a lot faster as well. But because of that, I mean, you have no control over your coding. It's just good for smaller websites. So let's, let, let's talk about the cons of using Webflow, right? The con is definitely hard to manage. Like I mentioned, you don't have control over your coding, so you cannot organize your code. And when you're working on a big website, just very, very hard to manage. So I will say that Webflow is usually great for smaller website, not big website. And one of the biggest con about Webflow, in my opinion, is that the blocking system just not good. Like my client, you know, think about all this website right now, right? They will definitely have a block and the block is where they will get better SEO, right? So most of my clients will need a block and Webflow is just very, very bad for blocking. And so the, the, the Webflow website that I called it, my client requested another blocking system. So I do like change the site to something else and the blocking just not great. Um, so that is one of the biggest con. And also Webflow is not free. Right, you have to pay money monthly fee to use Webflow as a service. So, which one do I use right now? Right, I kind of use both. It really depends on what the client requests. Right, if the client would like the site to be built on Webflow, I'll just use Webflow. But I would say that maybe like eighty percent of my client right now, they will still be using web WordPress, and that is you know most of these websites that I built, they will just request to be built on WordPress because of the blocking system. Right, so it really depends on both, but the but the key part is, um, you know, learning the fundamentals, right? Knowing HTML and CSS, and I think that is the part where once when you know this, you can be on both sides, right? So I think learning the basic fundamentals is very important. And also as a UI and UX designer, I code a lot of my, you know, product design project that you will not be able to use Webflow to develop, right? So for example, if I'm creating a product and uh, like I would like to code out my UI elements like on a dashboard and all that right and this is you know the, the kind of you know product that I build and because I know HTML and CSS I can also have my client to build out this kind of products and work with their backend team on that and for this portion of work that kind of account for about 30 to 40 percent of my revenue per year right so because I, I know HTML and CSS and I can do all that but if you only use Webflow if you only know how to work with, within Webflow you're losing out this big part of you know front end departments right if you're ever getting into front end departments so my kind of my uh, my conclusion is that if you're thinking about this kind of thing definitely the most important thing you need to learn is the fundamentals and which is basically html and css 
Once you really learn those, you don't have to learn a lot of things and you can always contract out other portion of work to other people. And you know, the basic of fundamentals of HTML CSS is also required by a lot of jobs as kind of like a great to have sections, right? So think about that. And that is it for the video. If you get any kind of value from it, you know, definitely give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel as well. And also follow me on the social media links down below, like Dribble, Instagram or whatever. And I'll talk to you guys next time. Cheers.